Hey guys, this is Emerald Fire. This video is about an update I've made to my library of math functions to include representation of floating point numbers in scoreboard values in Minecraft. If you didn't know, scoreboard can only take integer values, so 1, 2, 3, 4, not anything like 1.5 or 0 0.33. Floating point values are values with decimals, so whereas this number here would be an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this number here is a decimal, 12.345. This cannot be represented in the default scoreboard, but as a floating point number, it can be represented. And the functions that I've added allow for operations with this, such as adding, dividing, multiplying, and subtracting. I'm going to start off this video with a little crash course on what floating point numbers are for anyone who doesn't know. Floating point numbers are basically a representation of a number so that the number is stored in one part of memory and then in another part of memory it stores the location of the decimal point. For example, in one part of memory it would be something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then another part of memory would be where the decimal point is, so this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a decimal point after the second digit, and this one is the same number in memory but with the decimal point after the fourth digit, and this one has the decimal point uh, one place to the left of the first digit. Now because computers operate in binary it wouldn't be stored exactly like that it would be stored in a binary sequence sequence of ones and zeros so instead of storing where the decimal place is in base 10 which is the numbers 1 through 9 or 0 through 9 it would be where the decimal place is in binary numbers either 0 or 1. Here is what a floating point number looks like in memory this is 32 bits, which is what I've represented with my system. The first bit is a sign, so it's either positive or negative, and because Minecraft scoreboard values are already positive or negative, this bit is represented by the sign of the scoreboard value itself. The next is the exponent, which is 8 bits, and this is the exponent of the number stored in memory, plus 127, because that's the standard for storing floating point exponents. And then we have the actual number called the significand. This number is a 24-bit number, but it's represented with 23 bits because if you look here, this first bit is always a 1, so it's not even written down. That leaves the remaining 23 bits to represent the number. And this number here is 5, so the number 5 in binary is 101. And the exponent stored over here, you'll have to subtract 127, and if you do that, this number here is 129, so you'll get the exponent is 2. So to get a 5, you'll take the decimal place from here. The decimal place always starts to the right of the invisible 1, and you'll move it 1, 2. And then you'll get 5.0 in binary, and that's how floating point numbers work. I've implemented this in Minecraft scoreboard by ignoring the display, they are displayed as integers, and just using the bits directly underneath them. Right here I have a function to convert an integer to a float. So I will convert a 3 to floating point, and you'll see in the sidebar that is what 3 looks like as a floating point number represented as a decimal integer in the scoreboard. I also have a function that converts floats back into integers. And for this one, I'm just taking the value that's currently in output and turning it into an integer. So if I click this, you'll see we get 3 back in the scoreboard. And if that number had any decimals, then it would have been lost because the scoreboard can only, see, uh, can only display integer values, so it would cut off the decimal from that number. But 3 didn't have any decimals, so didn't lose anything there. It also has the four basic arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Here I have some more complex floating point numbers. We've got um, 556.234. I've pre-calculated this to be this number as a float. Feel free to check my work. And then I've also got 61.999, and that's this. So we put them in input 1 and input 2. And then we should get out this number here. So if we click this button and look in the scoreboard, the values do match. So this one worked with the correct precision and got exactly the number displayed here. Over here we've got this number again and we're going to subtract 
556.234 from it. Those are the same numbers over here, but this time we're subtracting, and this will result in a negative value. So we'll hit those to subtract. And if you look over here at the result, you see that it actually does not match exactly. The scoreboard value is too higher than the value what it's exactly represented. The thing with floating point numbers is that by their nature, they're an approximation. Whereas integers are exact, you can count up 1, 2, 3, 4, and store those numbers in binary exactly. There are infinitely many real numbers between, say, 1 and 2. And there are not infinitely many ways you can store numbers between 1 and 2 uh, in binary because you only have a limited amount of space. So floating point will give the best approximation to the number that it can. And it just so happens that this result is not exact to our total number of bits. Uh, it is very, very close, though. So uh, that those two values um, way over to the right there, it's almost nothing. And if you see over here, I'm going to take that approximation value that's not exactly to the result, and then I'm going to multiply it by 100,000 so we can see all the decimal places when I put it back into an integer. And this will be the number that we get. So we've got that number that's currently in our sidebar here, 494.235, and then a little bit of extra that we weren't expecting. And we're going to multiply it by 100,000. And this is the result over here. You can see that. Um, it should be 49,423,504. So we will go over to uh, float to int and convert it. And there you go. If you look at this over here, that is the correct number. And you can see the result that it was supposed to be is very close. So it's only uh, 0.00004 off of what the value was expected to be. That's the trade-off when you're working with floating point numbers. You can't have infinite precision all the time. Right, and so that's multiplication, and the final function that I have is division. For this one, I'm going to do 4 divided by 100,000. So this time we'll get a small decimal. It should be uh, 0.00004. The actual value it comes to is 3 point a lot of nines because there's a very small approximation error. But for all intents and purposes, if you were doing calculations with these numbers, this would be close enough. So we'll, uh, yeah, we got the 4 here, and we got 100,000 here. We will divide. And if you saw on the scoreboard, it took uh, just a little bit longer to update, because division actually, it still all runs in one game tick. So if you were running commands, like with command blocks, then you could immediately run commands after this, and it would finish in the same game tick. But because it has to run a lot of commands for the approximation algorithm, it slows down game ticks a little bit if the computer can't keep up. Uh, I'm using the newton raphson method for division approximation, which involves um, a number of multiplications just to do one division. So it has to do this, I think a total of nine times. I don't remember how many. But yeah, so it may slow down the game tick just a little bit. So if you're going to use this, don't do a lot of floating point divisions in one game tick. Anyway, we've got uh, this number here, and that's in the scoreboard. If I were to try to put this into an integer, it's just going to say zero because it's a very small decimal. But you can check my work if you want to see that this is actually correct. I'm going to put a link to a floating point converter in the description of this video. You can play around with it if you want. I certainly used it a lot in the making of these functions. And that's pretty much all there is. I don't know if these things will be specifically useful for anything you might have, what I was going to do with these is I was actually trying to make a ray casting function so that you could teleport entities in the direction that another entity is looking. But uh, in the process of making this, uh, someone told me, um, yeah, someone commented about another ray casting function that someone else had made, and it's more efficient because it doesn't mess around with floating points. It just uses integers in the scoreboard, and it's not exact, but it makes a good approximation because it multiplies the integers by 
like 100,000 or something so that the decimals are actually stored in the scoreboard instead of being clipped off. Yep, yeah, well, so uh, this is all I'm going to do with the floating points, I think. I won't bother doing the ray casting. And that's all for this video. So thanks for watching. The download for the math function library is in the descriptions. Uh, is in the description. As always, you'll still need to run function math init to make these commands function once you download them into your world for the first time. And then you should be good to go. All right, yeah, that's it now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.